This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Well, welcome to worship at St. Mark's United Church of Christ. And Randy, thank you thank you for the music. Thank you for your leadership. And just uh, my wife and I are so pleased to be in your midst. Thank you for allowing us into your midst. Today, we church honors two days, two, two celebrations, right? Today is Father's Day, uh, which is mightily important in the life of the church. And uh, that federal holiday that just recently got announced is Juneteenth Day is today. Now, I went to high school over there in Kiel and never heard about that. Um, though some were already honoring that day years ago, uh, that that day, uh, two months after the end of the Civil War, the last slaves in uh, down in Texas finally learned of the end of the Civil War. So it was two months, you know, I, I we thought when they signed the papers and the generals got together, I thought it was all over. Uh, but far from it, as we know, right? Far from it. Um, uh, and, and if I had been wiser, the other scripture that's not going to be read today, that's part of the lectionary, is a word that the Apostle Paul wrote to the church in Galatia. There is neither Jew nor Greek, slave nor free in Christ Jesus. I missed it. I apologize. <laughs> it would have been a great opportunity to use that scripture. Anyway, Father's Day. So uh, um, I, I hope you're feeling more comfortable with me as I'm in your midst, and I'll be here a couple times uh, next month, too, uh, while your pastor's on vacation. So uh, we've got today Father's Day. I could have used this as a children's message, but I want to focus on one of the scriptures when I'm with the children. Peter helping, okay? Uh, Father's Day. When you think of the acronym Father, F-A-T-H-E-R, you think of your father, the letter F. What do you think of? Faithful. Faithful? What? Faithful. Faithful, faithful. It was like a do it right here. <clears throat> Any other F words when you think of your father? Funny. Funny. <laughs> Funny. Yeah. 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 Friend. Friend. Oh. Thank you. Thank you. A. What do you think of when you think of your father? Accepting. Accepting. Any other A words? So, you know, I, I stumbled over the A word as I was thinking about this. The, the word that came to mind for me was arms. Uh, I think of my father's arms. Arms. F A T. What T word do you think of when you think of your father? Yes. Trusting. Trusting. Thank you. Thank you. What? Teacher. Teacher. Thoughtful. Thoughtful. That's beautiful. F-A-T-H. Father. H. Helpful. Humor. Humor. Back to that fun word again. Yes. Humor. <laughs> you, you know, when you think, isn't it fun just to think about our fathers having time to think? Humor. Any other H words? Party and? Heroin. 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 Thank you. F-A-T-H-E, Father. Empathy. Empathy. Thank you. Energetic. Energetic. <laughs> Don't sit still. Let's get going to it. Let's go to it, right? Let's go to it. Energetic. Encouraging. Encouraging. How many times as we're growing up, don't we just feel like giving up once in a while? Got to keep going. Got to Don't quit. Don't quit. There's one more. When you think of your father in our word. Resourceful. Reliable, resourceful. Rare. Rare. That's interesting. Rare. One of a kind. One of a kind. Only one person, and when that person isn't with us anymore, there's just an emptiness, right? Just an emptiness. Another R word, any other R words. Well, happy Father's Day to those of you who are being honored with that role. And all to you who are thinking about your father, happy Father's Day as well. Will you please stand and join me in our call to worship this morning? Glory be to God who lives and reigns now and forevermore. Amen. We praise God for creating this world in all its beauty and abundance. 
We praise Jesus Christ for redeeming this world from its darkness and sin. We praise the Holy Spirit for calling us together as the body of Christ. Glory be to God now and forevermore. Amen. And as I came in this morning, I previewed my parts so I can be sure I'm reading everything correctly. And I noticed that the words printed here in the United States or the United Church of Christ statement of faith are different than what we normally say in our services. So I asked Pastor about that, and he said it's been revised a few times. And this is the latest version, which is more of a conversation with God and promotes more inclusive language. So while it's different than the version we normally say together, I think that's a good way for us to think about those words. I know as a teacher, I often have times when I'm explaining something to kids, and it may not make sense, but then another of the kids explains it in a way that I think was not as well thought out as what I did. But we under, kids understand it. So sometimes we receive messages in different ways and get different meanings from it, even though the essential meaning is the same. So please join me in this um, statement of faith. We believe in you, O oh God, eternal spirit, God of our Savior Jesus Christ and our God. And to your deeds we testify. You hold the worlds into being, create persons in your own image, and set before each one the ways of life and death. You seek in holy love to save all people from aimlessness and sin. You judge people and nations by your righteous will, declared through prophets and apostles. In Jesus Christ, the man of Nazareth, our crucified and risen Savior, you have come to us and shared our common lot, conquering sin and death, and reconciling the world to yourself. You bestow upon us your Holy Spirit, creating and renewing the Church of Jesus Christ, binding in covenant faithful people of all ages, tongues, and races. You call us into your Church, to accept the cost and joy of discipleship, to be your servants in the service of others, to proclaim the gospel to all the world and resist the powers of evil, to share in Christ's baptism and eat at his table, to join him in his passion and victory. You promise to all who trust you forgiveness of sin and fullness of grace Courage in the struggle for justice and peace, your presence in trial and rejoicing, and eternal life in your realm, which has no end. Blessing and honor, glory and power be unto you. Amen. And our hymn this morning is number 282 in the hymnal, Faith of Our Fathers.
Later on, the focus text is going to be a story from the life of Elijah. And a portion of that story that I'm going to hone in on at the end is how he, at the end, he's, we've got a broken human being before us. Just someone who's not as strong as he once thought he was, didn't have his life together as he once thought he was, and there's just a need for God. So as I was thinking about that, I came up with this uh, responsive prayer that I hope you'll be able to enter into. God speaks to us through scripture, music, poetry, and prayer. David Hollis is a Christian, a poet, and a musician. In a well-known hymn, Oz has composed a chorus where he envisions the voice of God speaking to us.
Psalms, the prayers that have been retained, accumulated from the people, our forebears in faith. Psalm 42. Uh, so this is a prayer that fits well with the scripture you're going to hear later of uh, you know, the story about Elijah. But in particular, I think you might be helped to know a couple things that uh, the ancient Israelites would have known, but perhaps we don't know as well. For example, if you go about four-fifths of the way down the psalm, uh, there's a part that says, Therefore I remember you from the land of Jordan and of Hermon and from Mount Miser. Do you see that? Down, do you see where those words are? Down in the lower part of the psalm, do you see that? So Mount Hermon is this beautiful mountain in northern Israel. It's snow covered, it's a place of snow skiing. I mean, it's just this gorgeous, and it's more than just one mountain, it's kind of a mountain chain. Uh, so, so if you can envision that in your mind, uh, the Israelites would have been able to envision that. And, and then uh, where it says Mount Miser. Mount Miser is a mountain as well, close to Mount Hermon, but they're both in northern Israel. Mount Miser isn't as glorious as Hermon, but it's, it's beautiful nonetheless. And the land of Jordan, the Jordan is the Jordan River. We know that from the life of Jesus where he's baptized at the Jordan River. But it's this lush, flowing land. And so when they talk about the land of Jordan, which is, you know, lush, it's beautiful. There's, there's life growing there. One other thing. The next line reads, deep calls to deep at the thunder of your cataracts. Now when you and I think of cataracts, we think of those things that grow over our eyes, right? So if you, that might be, you know, if, if we didn't know any different, you, you, the, the psalm might not make sense. Definition number two of cataracts is waterfall. So that's the biblical understanding of cataracts, and the thunder of your cataracts, like so. So the thunder of a waterfall is what the psalmist needs to be communicating. Not that thing that goes over our eyes, but a waterfall. Let's pray together. As a deer longs for flowing streams, so my soul longs for you, O oh God. My tears have been my food day and night, while people say to me continually, Where is your God? These things I remember as I pour 